production. Now it's actually 4.30 here, which is great. <laughs> 4.30 p.m. <laughs> I'm really, really humbled to be here. And um, as Gertrude um, said previously, I'm here a lot. Uh, I love what, uh, listening to Jerry as well and listening to the other women speak because this forum is just an amazing forum to hear about everyone's experiences and everyone's stories. Um, because if you listen to them, they're all inspired. And there's always a lesson that you can learn each of them. I'm Michelle Jones. I'm a mother of four, and I'm a trailing spouse. As uh, Ruth was saying, I keep moving. We've moved uh, and lived in eight different homes and six different countries in the last 20 years. So that means moving every two to three years. My life made me realize that our strength is dependent on how we handle the challenges that come our way. If you can imagine every time we move, we pull out and end our life wherever we are and pack up our things, pull out our kids from schools, get ready for the next move, research the new place, you know, um, learn the language, learn the culture, move in, find new schools. <laughs> and just when everyone is settled, I actually get to figure out what to do with my life. So <laughs> it's not easy but we always look at each move as our next adventure you know so that's actually a term that we use in our family we always say after about a couple of years in one country we go okay where's the next adventure because we know it's going to happen so we look forward to it and we plan to live it and live the life in this new place the best we can now my the way i deal with challenges i guess just got better and better through the years because of all the things that I've gone through. But one of the biggest challenges I experienced was 18 years ago when I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. See, Adam and I got married, moved from the Philippines to Australia. That was my first big move with him. And I had in tow two of my kids from a previous marriage. And moving to Australia where there were four seasons. We lived in a country where there was only hot and cold, hot and wet. And uh, we were moving into one where there was ice in some days. And it was just um, a difficult transition. You know, people don't realize the difficulty of moving um, or, or marrying somebody from a different nationality or a different country. With the move, is the understanding or the realization that it's a totally different culture, it's a totally different way of life that you have to start learning. I remember the kids and I uh, going into Australia and then laughing because you know they had this weird way of um, uh, talking about things. They, they spoke English, but it wasn't English. We would always tease my hus husband and say, that's not English, we learned American English. And you know, instead of saying U-turn, they would say Yui. Instead of saying a barbecue, they'd say a Barbie, you know? So we always said, oh, Aussies are so lazy. They got to cut all the words shorter. But it, it was one of those things that we enjoyed. We enjoyed learning new things. But what we didn't enjoy was now not having the rest of our family support um, in, in Australia. So not having my parents, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents, um, you know, as I was going through the challenges. The other thing that um, I'm not sure if you guys can relate to, but in Asia, in Africa and other countries, having staff at home, having a maid at home is a normal thing. And I grew up that way. I grew up with uh, two nannies for my two kids. So it was like being a princess, but it was just a way of life. It was just something I grew up doing or experiencing. Moving to Australia and having to do all that was a big shock. And you know, one of the funniest things for my husband was seeing how stressed I get when the house was a mess. You'd have kids, so obviously the house would be a mess, it always say. But I never saw my house as a mess when we were back in the Philippines. And I, would ne I hated having friends over. I was so stressed when he'd you know, invite friends and, and try to introduce me to his friends until I got to a neighbor's house who was trying to rescue me from all my stress. 
and I saw the mess in her house and I go, oh my God, it's okay. <laughs> I'm making my life so complicated by thinking there cannot be anything that's out of place in my house because I never saw anything out of place in my house previously when I had somebody helping me with the house. So, I mean, just those little things. But what I didn't realize was that if you have a lot of major things that is happening to you, a lot of traumatic things for your system or your body or for your mind, it can actually dictate to illness afterwards. So with the move, with the transition, with missing my family and friends, with losing my pets, I remember, you know, just felt like month after month, I would get bad news from home. First, my cat run away. Um, next, my outdoor cat, you know, um, cut, her, cut himself when he went on somebody else's fence and you know, in the Philippines, we have broken glass on our fence to protect us from intruders. And he'd cut his belly. And the thing is, again, in a third world country, not so much happening right now. But back then, if that happened and they knew they couldn't rescue the cat, they just throw the cat away. My cat, my, I got a call saying we had to throw the cat away. And I thought, oh my God, how could you do that? I loved that cat. But, you know, it was like, well, you weren't here and we had to deal with it. It's done. Next message was my Dalmatian passed away and then my Doberman passed away. So I love pets. You know, at one point I had like 13 cats, two turtles, I had chickens in the house because they were part of the family. I enjoyed raising my two children with pets around them and it was just so overwhelming to deal with that and I'd literally be crying at home and no one would be there to understand or 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 you know uh, make me feel better or you know just just I didn't have someone that that I could talk to that I felt understood me and it was really difficult going through that and again as I said considering that they felt like family to me my dogs were my kids as well losing them one after another was just a big trauma to me anyway two years down the track i got pregnant things started going back to normal but in my pregnancy i got really really sick it felt like i was being stabbed i had this really horrible stabbing pain in my gut and they couldn't figure out what was wrong and i remember getting the message or yeah, my doctor finally saying, look, we couldn't do all the tests, but you know, we think it's pregnancy pains. And I said, look, I've had two previous pregnancies. I've never had these pains before, so it can't be pregnancy pains. And the next answer was, you're just getting old. And I thought, how can you say that? I was in my thirties, you know, <laughs> old, what are you talking about? And it was just an answer that they gave because there was no other answer to give me. It wasn't until after my daughter was born that they could finally do more tests on me. And they found out that I actually had Crohn's disease. I had ulceration of my bowel. So what, what happened was that every time I ate, the food would go through the bowel and would literally like scratch the ulceration and make them bigger. So they're like wounds in my bowel. And I was getting weak. I was getting exhausted because my body was in a constant state of trying to heal itself. And the stabbing pain was just that. It was all the wounds inside my gut. So it was good to finally have a diagnosis. It was good to, to prove to everyone it wasn't all in my head. It was good to just know what was going on. The difficult part was hearing what the doctor's advice was afterwards. And his advice was for me to actually go on steroids. And he said, you know, you'll have to be on steroids for the rest of your life. And I thought, you know, I can't go on steroids. Finally, after, you know, having a husband who would support me and, and allowed me to just stay at home, take care of this daughter, or, you know, he didn't care if I would work, if I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, I had the opportunity to raise my child. With my two previous kids, because I was a single mom, I was working all the time. And I didn't want anyone to take this opportunity away from me. I wanted to be there for her. I wanted to be able to provide her everything. And most especially, I didn't want to have to breastfeed her while I was taking steroids. Because what if I passed on the steroids to her? What would that mean? What would happen to her? 
And I remember the doctor saying, look, it's not going to happen. You know, there are very few uh, reasons to, to worry or think that that could happen. And I looked at him and I said, but you can't guarantee that. You can't tell me that you're 100% sure my daughter's going to be fine. And he said, no, you're right. I can't. So I kept trying to figure out what to do. And I said, look, doc, just allow me time to at least breastfeed my daughter and figure out another option. I really don't want to go on steroids. I want to be able to raise my child, right? And if I could, I want to be able to breastfeed for a couple of years. And the good thing was he agreed with me. I mean, not every doctor would actually say yes to that. I mean, a lot of doctors would just say, you know, just take the advice, do what you're told. <laughs> he was actually a very good man. And, you know, um, I'm really thankful for that. During that period, I researched Crohn's disease. I tried to be basically uh, an expert in Crohn's. I looked at the journals. I looked at um, um, the stories of people online, the eBooks that were available. Um, I went to naturopaths, herbalists, iridologists. I took herbs and supplements, changed my diet. And I did what you call an elemental diet, which is basically a liquid diet. So I did that for about 12 weeks. We started doing it for six weeks and then we just kept going and continuing with it because though I was meant to be okay to stop at six weeks, once you go to that and you feel good, it's hard to stop what you're doing because I was kind of afraid of eating normal food after that. And I went to see the doctor and when he tested me, he said, I can't believe you're in remission. What did you do? And I told him what I did. And he said, wow, I can't believe you did that. And he grabs this medical journal from his shelf and he goes, it's in the medical journal. And I said, why did you tell me that? Why didn't you give that to me as an option? He said, because it was never something that people would follow through. People never finished or completed the program to take them into remission. But I wanted it. I was sure I was going to do it. And that gave me an aha moment. I realized that if I went through this path, just kept going, learning more about it, I would be able to save myself from ever going back and getting Crohn's. And I'd be able to actually help others find another option. So I learned herbal medicine. I became a naturopath. I went into anti-aging medicine as well. And I started helping other people to actually rebuild themselves. I help people understand that the body knows how to rebuild itself up and no one can ever say there's only one way to do things. And I love that. I love being able to change people's lives. I love being able to tell them, look, even if that's the report from the doctor, your body has a different report. Your body has a different way of actually dealing with things. And since then, I've been able to actually help people initially through the clinics. Eventually, I was able to create an online program for them. I've called the program Longevity Insight because if you just know the tools, you can help achieve optimal health, lengthen your life, give yourself optimal health so that you can actually have the energy and the vitality of a young person even at an older age. At 52... 20 years on, I'm still a trailing spouse. I've got three grandkids, a fourth on the way, and we've never gone back to taking medications. We've always stayed on the herbs. We've always built and rebuilt our system. I got dengue twice when we were in Sri Lanka. Both times I was able to even travel because I was able to rebuild my system very fast. So your body is smart. Your body can heal itself. You just need to get the tools and believe that your body has everything in it to actually help you become the best possible person. You just need somebody to help you out. So if you find yourself in that situation, if you find that you're sick and everyone's saying that there's only one way Know that your body has a lot of different ways that it can heal itself. You just need to provide it the tools. You need to know what the tests are that are involved. And I can help you that with our online program. Lastly, know that you are created to do great things. You weren't created to just fall apart. So your body's not just going to fall apart like I was told it was going to. So I hope you learned something from that talk today. And remember, don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt what the creator has given you because you are meant for greater things and your body's going to get you and help you get all that happening. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>